Now here we've got a nodule uh, from deep soft tissue and uh, there's no skin here. So this is you know, probably subcutis or deeper. And you can see even from this power, we've got these unusual irregular uh, kind of lakes or you know, islands, uh, I don't know what you want to call them, of bright pink material. And it's surrounded by a cellular aggregate kind of making a rim uh, around these islands, okay? So when we look closer, what we have is that the center of these islands are pools, are red, kind of amorphous but vacuolated material with very little cellularity. And it's basically fibrin or a fibrinoid necrosis, you could make an argument, kind of dead collagen and fibrin mingled together. Uh, uh, it depends on if you depends on what what you want to call the diagnosis as to what term you use. In my opinion, this looks a lot like fibrin, but I would argue there probably are some dead col dead or degenerated collagen bundles in there. So so some people might use the term fibrinoid necrosis for this. I think that's probably what I would say here too. And what it's surrounded by is a rim of plump histiocytes. So kind of a granulomatous infiltrate around this core of dead fibrin and dead collagen in the middle, okay, with relatively little inflammation. And if we look closer, these are plump histiocytes. They don't have significant atypia. So this is the pattern what we're seeing here. The pattern we're seeing here is palisaded granulomatous dermatitis or palisaded necrobiotic granulomatous dermatitis, excuse me. So palisaded necrobiotic granulomas, which means these big uh, pools of degenerated material surrounded by a dense layer of palisading kind of layered histiocytes, um, is a pattern that we see in a couple of different things. We can see it in rheumatoid nodule and deep granuloma annulari, okay? So the classic teaching is that rheumatoid nodule is a red granuloma. It has bright red, more fibrin-rich deposits in the center of the palisaded necrobiotic granulomas. And deep GA, deep granuloma annulari, tends to have mucin or myxoid material. So it's more blue and looks like a blue granuloma, okay? Um, I would say that in real life, though, it doesn't quite work out that way so, so often. So if you were to show me this on a test and say, no clinical information, what is the answer? I would tell you this is a rheumatoid nodule probably. But in this case, per the, um, per the, the answer sheet here, and again, this is a very old case and I don't have the clinical history, but the clinical history evidently supported that this was not rheumatoid nodule, not the patient did not have rheumatoid arthritis, but instead this fit better for deep granuloma annulari, deep GA. So it doesn't always work out. Um, and, you know, some people, you know, have made claims that you can, you know, you can see some fibrin in deep GA, but you shouldn't see a mucin or myxoid change in rheumatoid nodule. But I feel like I've seen exceptions both ways. So just know that classically, the, if it's red and it's palisaded necrobotic granulomas, rheumatoid nodule is the classic finding. But if it's blue mucin, um, or if it's got dermal changes that look good for regular granuloma in your area, then it would be uh, more likely um, uh, deep GA. The way I handle this in real life, especially if I don't have clinical information, is I would say here, palisaded necrobotic granulomas. See comment, and in the comment, I would say that the findings look like rheumatoid nodule, but if the patient doesn't have a history of rheumatoid arthritis or doesn't have signs and symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, then the other possibility would be a deep GA. And um, I, in my experience, infectious granulomas very rarely produce a pattern like this. Uh, but I have seen one rare case that ended up being an AFB infection, and that had a look very similar to a uh, rheumatoid nodule. It looked, it looked I, I, it's been so long, I don't remember exactly, but it, it, I remember thinking it was going to be rheumatoid nodule. So I don't al always think that it's required to do infectious bug stains on every, uh, on every case of, of uh, deep GA or rheumatoid nodule that you see. Um, in fact, a lot of times I'll say a comment to the effect that I, I wouldn't favor an infectious process, but if there's clinical concern, they could biopsy for cultures. Uh, but if you want, you can do uh, infectious stains on these. I, I feel like you could have different views from different people, but um, uh, it is quite time consuming to search for infectious uh, organisms in a big specimen like this. And, um, and so you have to kind of think about feasibility uh, and the caseload that you have to take care of to make sure you get all your patients taken care of in a timely fashion, and also what your pretest probability of infection is, depending on the scenario. So that's my, uh, my thoughts on that, and you can think about that and decide what you want to do.
Um, I would also say a couple other things is that rheumatoid nodules um, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, you'll often see lymphocytes and plasma cells around them. That can be a helpful clue. And also they often have some scattered neutrophils and nuclear debris is often present in rheumatoid nodule. Um, I feel like it's less common to see those things in deep GA, but again, none of those things are totally specific. So they really have to fit it with the clinical scenario. But this was called um, a deep GA based on the clinical information in this case. But I would say that honestly, you could put this in a picture in a book and say it's a rheumatoid nodule and it looks perfect for that. The important, uh, one important thing before we go on to the next case to point out is that, um, oh yeah, rheumatoid nodules often arise over joints, uh, the elbow particularly, or the, the joints of the hand um, in patients with rheumatoid arthritis. Not all patients get them. Um, uh, who have rheumatoid arthritis are often soft, they're clinically uh, often recognized as rheumatoid nodule. Uh, deep GA tends to be more common in younger patients, particularly kids, and may present as one or more subcutaneous nodules, often on the lower leg of a child. Uh, but you know, kids can get rheumatoid arthritis also, so it's important to keep in mind that even though if it's a kid, you know, that, uh, rheumatoid arthritis could still be in the differential. It just depends on the situation. Um, but the, the last thing I wanted to say is that the one bad thing that you want to always keep in your differential for a palisaded necrobotic granuloma is epithelioid sarcoma because it can produce a similar pattern that resembles closely, sometimes from low power, closely resembles rheumatoid nodule or deep GA. But when you look closer, what you'll see is the cells around the edge are not actually plump histiocytes, but instead they're very large uh, nuclei with pale chromatin, very atypical appearing and have abundant dense pink cytoplasm and they're actually malignant cells and if you have any doubt you can do stains like keratin and EMA which are going to usually be positive and also INI1 or SMARC B1 which is going to have loss of nuclear staining in the majority of cases of epithelioid sarcoma. So uh, it's important to remember that because it can also present as a non-specific nodule on the distal extremity of a young adult just like a deep GA or a rheumatoid nodule could. So important to always keep that in mind in your differential and look, look, uh, look around at these cells and make sure they don't look malignant. And if you have any doubt, you can do immunostates to sort that out. I have many videos about epithelioid sarcoma. It's extremely rare, but it's an important mimic to always make sure that you don't miss uh, when you're thinking about rheumatoid nodule or deep GA.